The wholesome patriotic image of Coca-Cola came under heavy scrutiny when it was revealed the company was playing both sides during the Second World War. In Colombia during the 2000s, Coca-Cola was accused of intimidating and even murdering labor union officials who stood against their plans. Deep in the mainland of the African continent, a man wanders across the scorching sands of the Sahara Desert. The man's lips are dry as a bone. Thirst racks his entire body. A light shines upon the horizon. His heart fills with hope, and he runs towards the source, only to find that the sun's light has caught on a bright red billboard with the name Coca-Cola written across the metal. Whether you find yourself in the mountains of Tibet or the deserts of South America, Chances are very good you'll find some place that sells Coca-Cola. But how did this soft drink come to rule the world? What's the story behind the planet's most famous brand? This is the dark story Coca-Cola doesn't want you to know. Chapter 1. The Great National Temperance Beverage Coca-Cola's origins, like so many global brands we all recognize today, are rooted in addiction. The dark story of this even darker drink begins all the way back in the 19th century. The United States, which was at this point in time still a relatively young nation trying to find its footing, found itself engulfed in a brutal and bloody civil war. One man serving in the 3rd Battalion of the Georgia State Guard, a vital part of the Confederate Army, would go on to change the entire world, but not in a way anyone would expect. On the 16th of April, 1865, Lieutenant Colonel John Stith Pemberton rode into battle along with his compatriots. Their objective was to hold a bridge leading into the Confederate-held city of Columbus in Georgia. The assault proved too much. Pemberton was slashed through the chest with a saber. He fell to the ground, writhing in pain, as the Union forces overwhelmed the Confederate Army. Pemberton was brought to a medical tent for treatment. The doctors saw his wound and figured he wasn't long for this world, so they administered some morphine to help ease his pain during his final moments. To everyone's shock, Pemberton survived, though not without a heavy cost. His body had become addicted to the pain-relieving effects of morphine. A year later, after the war had ended, Pemberton headed to his local pharmacy to find some kind of cure for his addiction. The chemists offered Vin Mariani, a supposed medicinal concoction, which was in reality nothing more than wine mixed with cocaine. Pemberton only traded one addiction for another. Drinking Vin Mariani made the cogs in Pemberton's mind begin to spin, however. He figured, if others could make such medicinal drinks, why couldn't he? So Pemberton set to work. His first creation was far from a massive success. The main ingredient of the drink was derived from buttonbush, a highly toxic plant. It was hardly the kind of thing people wanted to be putting into their bodies when they were already feeling ill. In 1886, Pemberton decided to focus on the ingredient that had first led to his addiction to Vin Mariani, cocaine. He began mixing wine with extracts of cola nut and cocoa leaves, which contained traces of cocaine, to create his brand new patented Pemberton's French Wine Cola. The man behind the drink claimed it could cure all kinds of ailments, such as nausea, heartburn, and headaches. But there was a problem. By 1886, prohibition was in full swing, and as the tonic included wine, Pemberton's creation was banned. So he kept the addictive syrup and mixed it with soda water instead of wine. Because of this change in recipe, he'd need a new name to better reflect the product. Pemberton's bookkeeper and friend, Frank Robinson, turned to him and suggested a name that would go down in history as one of the most beloved and controversial names in human history, Coca-Cola. Chapter 2. Six Million a Day very quickly, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to hit the like button. It helps the channel grow and the support is very much appreciated. Thanks. John Pemberton would never see the meteoric rise of his creation. He died in 1888, two years after the official launch of Coca-Cola. Though the mind behind the drink was gone, Coca-Cola would soon grow into a phenomenon that overshadowed any one man. The stage was set for Coca-Cola to take over the world. 
Shortly before his death, Pemberton sold the rights to Coca-Cola to Asa Candler, a business tycoon, for $300. At the time, this was roughly equivalent to just under $10,000. But Candler saw the opportunity Coca-Cola provided. He bought out all the remaining shares in a dubious manner, then had all records of his actions burned to cover his tracks. The takeover remains shrouded in mystery to this day, but chances are Candler didn't exactly play fair. Candler knew that the secret to Coca-Cola's success wasn't in the drink itself, but in the power of advertising. He wanted people all across America to associate Coca-Cola with only one thing, happiness. Candler invested massive amounts into advertisements. It soon became impossible to walk down a street in America without seeing a woman holding up a bottle of Coca-Cola, smiling down at you from atop a billboard. If you opened up your local newspaper, it was very likely you'd see an ad for this bold new drink. Cities all across America were soon painted head to toe in red. But Candler's most cunning marketing ploy came in turning Coca-Cola from a medicinal drink to a recreational one. Rather than market Coca-Cola as a drink you only bought when sick, why not sell it as a cool, refreshing beverage you could enjoy on a hot summer's day? America loved the drink right from the get-go. By the 1920s, the Coca-Cola empire had spread all over the country. The company began using clever and sometimes nefarious techniques to burn the Coca-Cola brand into consumers' minds. In 1928, the drink became an official sponsor of the Olympic Games, setting the trend for soda drinks to associate themselves with sports. On the 7th of December, 1941, the Japanese Empire launched a devastating surprise attack on the United States state's fleet docked in Pearl Harbor. The attack lives on in infamy in many Americans' minds, and it marked America's entry into the Second World War. For Coca-Cola, it was the moment that turned the company from a nationwide success into a global powerhouse. Why? The war meant that strict sugar rations were put in place, which normally would have devastated Coca-Cola's production lines. But the company was cunning. They lobbied American lawmakers and convinced them that the drink could be considered a wartime necessity, so it was exempt from sugar rations. Rationing. On top of this, Coca-Cola promised to make their drink available to any U.S. soldier anywhere in the world for the low price of only five cents. The U.S. military saw the value of providing the troops with some much-needed comfort and believed it was a logistical win. Public opinion of Coca-Cola also grew massively, and the company made sure to make their adverts always feature a smiling American soldier enjoying a cool Coke with the locals where he was stationed. Within just a few years, Coca-Cola dispensers were stationed all across the Pacific and Europe, from Japan to Berlin. By the late 1940s, Coca-Cola stood at the top of the food chain. It was the undisputed king of soft drinks and was associated with freedom, patriotism, and happiness by people all over the planet. Nothing could hope to stand in Coca-Cola's way, but soon the dark drink would face off with an equally dark beverage for control of the most influential asset in the world, culture. Chapter 3. Taste the Feeling After the United States liberated France from the clutches of Nazi Germany, the rampant spread of American culture became a problem in the eyes of many French nationalists, namely its hero leader, Charles de Gaulle. The spearhead of this cultural invasion, as many French saw it, was none other than Coca-Cola itself. This gave way to the name Coca-Colonization. Whereas French nationalists saw wine as the quintessential French export, they saw Coca-Cola as the embodiment of American culture. Caught in a war of soft power between the USSR and the United States, many French people worried their own culture would be erased in the aftermath. In response, nationalists began attacking Coca-Cola and putting forward the value of traditional French wine instead. One of the adverts showed French men enjoying some wine at a bar when an American salesman barges in and hands them each a bottle of Coca-Cola. The bartender spits out the drink in disgust and the patrons kick the American out of the bar with the narrator saying, take your cheap junk back to America. While Coca-Cola would win the cultural battle against the French nationalists, the whole incident taught the company a valuable lesson. You're not invincible and you aren't loved by all. Though Coca-Cola rose to global dominance in the late 20th century and remains the king of soft drinks today, the company made a number of blunders in the decades following the end of the Second World War. One in particular threatened to sink the brand entirely. 
First, the wholesome patriotic image of Coca-Cola came under heavy scrutiny when it was revealed the company was playing both sides during the Second World War. When the conflict broke out, trade embargoes meant Coca-Cola was cut off from its German headquarters. To circumvent the trade embargo, Coca-Cola Germany created a new drink similar to the original product named Fanta. Fanta became a staple drink in Nazi Germany and cemented itself as a national beverage. Second, as time went on, people became more and more conscious of the harmful effects Coca-Cola could have on the human body. Rotting teeth, high blood sugar, and obesity were all symptoms of those who consumed the drink their entire lives. Coca-Cola had an ace in the hole. They rebranded their sugar-free diet alternative, Tab, to Diet Coke, which led to the company rebranding itself as a health-conscious producer of drinks. Many bought into the image, though many still, to this day, remain unconvinced. Finally, in 1985, Coca-Cola made the cardinal sin. They changed the recipe. The idea was to revitalize the drink's image in the war against its long-standing competitor, Pepsi. This was a mistake of astronomical proportions. The happy, wholesome image that Coca-Cola had built over the last century was closely associated with the drink's taste, even if the taste wasn't anything to write home about. The core essence of what had driven Coca-Cola to the top was now being taken away. Coke fans took to the streets in outrage and voiced their disgust with new Coke. Coca-Cola quickly overturned the decision and the reintroduction of Coca-Cola Classic was a massive relief. In the end, the company ended up benefiting from the PR disaster, as so many were ecstatic to see their favorite drink hit the shelves once more. Still, it showed the world once again that Coca-Cola is far from untouchable. Though New Coke was by far the company's most significant controversy, Coca-Cola remains marred by unethical business practices to this day. In Colombia during the 2000s, Coca-Cola was accused of intimidating and even murdering labor union officials who stood against their plans. Coca-Cola has become a staple of Mexican diets, as the company keeps its prices lower than a bottle of water, and as drinking water is rare in the country. Coca-Cola has replaced water for many Mexican citizens, leading to significant health consequences. Not only that, the growth of Mexican tourism pushed many indigenous Mayans away from their local farmlands, meaning they had to rely on commercial processed foods to sustain themselves. Coca-Cola became the go-to drink, which ended up changing many local communities' cultures forever. From its early days as a supposed cure-all medicinal tonic to a soft drink recognized all over the planet, there's no denying that Coca-Cola has built a global empire that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Still, as more and more learn of the company's dark past, could Coca-Cola's reputation begin to crumble away? Time has shown that Coca-Cola isn't invincible, and there are plenty of hurdles the company still has to face. Has it built up enough of a foundation to weather any storm? We'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. Until next time.